property you might describe there as being he just uh, has a mild soft tissue problem the uh, players from that 2019 group, it seems like they're just hearing about their one and seeing them. They're kind of finding their voice as veterans on this team. Um, is there some ownership that they're taking of, the, of this team, being a little more comfortable expressing themselves and kind of taking control of this team? I hope so. I mean, they're the oldest guys on our team now, the third-year veterans. And, um, you know, Max Crosby and Farrell and Abram, you know, we had great press conferences when they got here. And, you know, now's their time. You know, we need them all to step up and, not only play good, but be leaders on this team. And uh, I'm encouraged by what they're saying. I'll be more encouraged when I see what they do. Mike Mack, yesterday, um, COVID-19, is it kind of a reminder that we're still not out of the woods here yet and uh, sought to be diligent? Well, I think it's just, uh, you know, it's alarming to me because we have the vaccine, you have the vaccine, and you get the, the COVID. So, um, you know, you got a lot of people out there with expert analysis. The reality is, is... You're never safe from this thing, so be careful. And God bless Mike. When I talk to him, he seems to be doing pretty good. We sure miss him around here. His enthusiasm and uh, his vibe is contagious in the building. Does that make it for you more frustrating because of all you guys have tried to do where every day you might get a call and it just it's like frustrating? Or is it no, he's, uh, he's just down the hall. It's almost like we're zooming. We're like I said the other day. We're the yeah. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, but what are you going to do? You know, you have to adapt, and uh, that's what we're becoming pretty good at. So I'm hearing your offensive line retooled, and Josh has worked at the offseason coming in, which you've seen on the first week. Is he poised to have maybe a top five in the league year, his best in three so far in Josh Jacobs? I think so. If he stays healthy, you know, he got hurt on a second play of the game in Atlanta last year, missed the Jets game, missed four games his rookie year, really. But if he can stay healthy and – we continue to improve. We, we think so. We think we've got the makings of a good line, but we have that to prove also. But Jacobs is the strength of this team, and uh, we'll certainly keep relying on him. Hey, John. Uh, Derek and Henry had some big plays today. What have you seen in the growth of that, of that connection? Uh, well, they made big plays last year in big, big moments. Kansas City, the Jets, you know, at the end of the New Orleans game, the, the pass interference call won us that game. So they're getting better. You know, I think the big thing with Henry is he's he's out here, he's practicing, and uh, he knows the offense. He anticipates what's going to be called now instead of reacting to what's called as he's lining up. And um, we're seeing really good things from Ruggs and Edwards. Really proud of them so far. And with Waller out today, we changed the script a little bit, and um, I was encouraged. John, um, Tanner Muse continues to kind of show up in that uh, base outside linebacker position. Has he worked his way into? Uh... Well, he's showing up in the base right now because he's showing up in the in the lineup. He hasn't won that spot yet. He's getting a good look. His speed and athleticism um, are what we think is conducive to that position, the auto position. So he's doing some good things. We are, we aren't in enough base to really see him yet, but. That will continue to uh, emerge as the next couple weeks unfold. John, um, Jacob said it last week. Actually, a few players have said that one of your messages is all or nothing. Can you define that to us in terms of in your mind what what that message is this year? Same message as last year and every year. You know, you got to go all out. You know, I'm not going to get too deep and philosophical after first day of pads. But, uh, you know, we all got to be on the same page. You know, we've got a great group of guys. The energy level is extreme. And um, we've got good veteran leadership on this team. I like the culture here better than any of the teams I've had in a long time or been a part of. Last week, Greg said that some of the strength and conditioning program during the offseason has really helped the offensive line. They've come in a lot more agile, ready to go right off the bat rather than working into it and seeing what needs to be tweaked. Are you seeing that? Yeah. And you know what? I think this facility is, uh, you know, you give Mark Davis, the Raiders, a credit. This is, this is a facility we have not had. And being in Las Vegas, it's encouraging players. Not that Oakland wasn't a, a place people wanted to live, but the tax situation is different. We've attracted more players to uh, – to our off-season program. And Ray, A.J. Nibel, I wouldn't trade him for anybody. I mean, he, he and his staff, they do a great job. They service um, quarterbacks a lot differently than kickers and kickers differently than guards. But to your point, if you don't see unbelievable gains in Foster Moreau and John Simpson, uh, some of these guys, uh, 
you haven't been studying them. They're, they're really stronger, they're more athletic, and they're, they're more durable, and they can finish. They've got better stamina. John, when did uh, Nick Kwiatkowski become a ball hawk? Two interceptions? Well, Marcus, the only two interceptions we've thrown here, I think Marcus and Nick are roommates. I don't know what the deal is on that. <laughs> you know, Mariota is off to a great start yesterday, and he looks like you know, the galloping ghost out there. And then today he throws four incredible passes. And, I, you know, I think uh, he and Nick are probably having a, a beer down at the, uh, you know, Caesars Palace right now. I don't know what the hell that's all about. But Nick is, a, you know, he's an instinctive player. You know, when you're in zone coverage, you're reading the quarterback. And he telegraphed both of those throws. And uh, it's really kept him away from having one hell of a camp. And he is having a good camp. But he could be having an outstanding camp had it not been for a couple of interceptions. Uh, getting back to the uh, conditioning, uh, look at Max Crosby, and it seems like he really committed himself uh, in that regard, and he looks the part this year. What are your early impressions of, of, of him? Well, he leads our team in effort. He does. He, he You talk about a guy that's here in the offseason. I think he lived in the facility. You know, my car's here, his car's here. Uh, you know, I, I drive by the facility, his car's still here. You know, he gets uh, uh, Ricky, our, our food, food expert, our nutritionist, helps him with his diet. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's incredible. He's in incredible shape. He can go all day. And I tried to wear him out today with a fourth quarter pass rush in the last drill. And, you know, he's, he's ready for the 15th round. He wants to keep fighting. But I love him. I love the way he's working and guys look up to him. And in Gakwe, that's his whole, that's his whole, whole deal. He's, he's a highly conditioned freak. And I think Max uh, and, and Yannick want to be there for four quarters. So is there a little bit more juice having the alumni here in attendance and, and the players get excited to see those guys? Yeah, you know, we wish we could interact with them more, but we don't clearly understand, you know, how much interaction we're allowed to have. You know, I saw Charlie Garner for the first time in a long time. I had him in Philly. I had him in Oakland. I had him in Tampa. One of my favorite players of, of all time and haven't seen him since uh, 2002 or whatever. But I don't know uh, how much – interaction, close interaction we can have. In the past, we've had them in our meetings. We have them talk to our team. I don't believe we can go to that extent right now, but we'll try to honor them tonight in a, in a function down at the stadium. All, All right. Correct. Thanks, guys. It seems like more and more that 2019 draft group, your group, um, seems to be finding their voice on this team and kind of taking ownership of this team as leaders. Do you kind of feel that and, and sense that? Is that something you guys talk about? Yeah, uh, for the most part, uh, we got a lot of guys that's, that's buying in, a lot of guys that's uh, being together, playing together uh, uh, with this new scheme and these defensive coaches. Um, it's just a way for us to all be on the same page, um, communicate with each other um, so everybody could um, be on their path to – uh, where they want to go, as um, long as everybody do their job, uh, show up, compete, um, execute, then we'll be fine. Detroit Lions, Tishon Reed from The Athletic. We've seen you and KC uh, running out there with the ones pretty off the off-camp so far. What has he brought to just to that cornerback room overall with one off the field? Um, Casey brings a lot of experience. Uh, he's a good guy. Um, he helps everyone. Um, he's been in the system for a long time. Uh, so it's good to go to him and ask questions. Uh, you know, he, he have a lot of knowledge on the defense and – how to play certain routes and this scheme and how things will play out. So um, he, he was a big uh, key for our defense, I believe, and right now he is. He's also a great leader as well. So it was a great pickup getting Casey. They often say that you know that the consistency is the key, especially at your position. Is that something you've been working hard on, how you feel like it's coming? Uh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, being consistent is the biggest thing I work on. Uh, though a lot of times – People feel like you're going to uh, make every play and do everything. But the more you're consistent, the more you just do your job, uh, the more you know what to do, a lot of things just happen for you. Uh, you just got to go out there, play fast, um, know your keys, uh, know your job, like I said, and um, just play football.
What's going on? Can you get a couple interceptions in the last two practices? Um, obviously, your, your primary responsibility is just to stop him to run, but what's the importance of also being skilled and, and pass coverage as a linebacker? Yeah, I mean, the league's changing. Uh, you know, you have tight ends, running backs for all receivers now, so being able to, you know, cover running backs, cover receivers, drop them back in the pass game and being a uh, – a factor in the pass game, and it's, it, it adds a lot to your game. Nick, uh, John Gruden said that you and Marcus are roommates, I guess. Um, is that going to be a conversation, second straight day that you intercepted him? What, uh, what kind of conversation? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he meant by that, but I mean, I, I think Marcus is a little mad at me right now. But, uh, you know, I messed with him after, after practice, but, it, I mean, it's all in fun. Nick, uh, Levi Damian, USA Today. So, John Gruden also said that he thinks maybe you guys went and had some beers, Caesars or something. You can maybe plan this out. Uh, what was your guys' plan coming into that? I'm sorry, can you say that last one? What was your plan coming into today um, when you guys went and had beers and planned out how you were going to intercept the ball? Oh, I mean, we, we might have to do that. I didn't even think about that. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's all, it's all fun and games. But, I mean, it's, as, a, as a defensive player, it's an exciting time to, you know, go out there and get interceptions. So, we might have to think about that for next week, making a plan. What are your initial impressions on Gus Bradley's, Gus Bradley's defense? It seems like a lot of guys are, you know, getting into uh, packages and personnel groupings. It seems like a lot of guys are playing. Uh, your first impressions of, the, of this defense? Uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, you know, it's one of the. It's a defense where you know you drop back. It's vision, and just reaction. Um, you know, for a defensive player, uh, especially a linebacker, I mean, that's that's what you want to do. You want to get back really, and play football. Um, so my initial reaction, I mean, I'm, we're having fun. Uh, you know, like I said, the fact that you can react and just play football. So, I mean, it's definitely en been enjoyable the first couple of days. The Raiders made a big uh, investment on the defensive line um, in a lot of ways. Uh, do you feel their presence uh, out there, the, some of the new guys and some of the holdovers as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, they're flying around. Uh, Coach Manuel does a great job with them. I mean, it's showing up in practice. Uh, <clears throat> since we started going full speed and everything, I mean, you definitely feel their presence. I mean, you can feel them when you're playing just in front of you. So, I mean, it's definitely, um, it's definitely been f fun to play behind them. Message. Others have talked about that. What does the message mean to you when you keep saying it's all or nothing this year? What does that mean? I guess to you, does it mean a record? Does it mean place? Like, what, what? When you hear that, what do you think? Uh, for me, I mean, it's giving every, giving everything you got. Um, you know, the goal for every team in the, uh, in the NFL is to start training camp, shooting for a Super Bowl. So, I mean, for I mean, that's what it that means to me. I mean, every guy in here comes in here, works as hard as they can, gives everything they got, and you know, let everything else sort sort each other out. What kind of dynamic have you seen out of Tanner Muse now that he's back? Uh, he's been great. You know, they got him, you know, uh, covering covering tight ends, playing the run game, playing the edge, setting the edge. Uh, he's showing versatility, speed. I mean, we had one-on-ones yesterday. He did a great job, you know, covering. Um, he's definitely showing, you know, why he got drafted. Uh, you know, we didn't get to see him last year, but he's definitely making, a, making a, you know, an impact this year. And I'm, he's been in his book, and I'm excited to see what he can do. Nick, it's easy for the guys on the offense to comment on Josh and, and what he brings, but when – from your side and what you're seeing with the retooled offensive line and just Josh's potential in his third season and so far what you've seen him for a week and a half. Yeah, the sky's the limit for him, man. And I got to watch him last year. Um, he's versatile. I mean, he can drop his head. He can, you know, break tackles, shake you. I mean, he's kind of the full, the complete package. Um, he's a guy, you know, as a linebacker, you don't want to tackle 10, 15, 20 times a game. So I'm excited to see him get going. Uh, you know, excited to see the O-line, you know, once we get uh, keep getting into these padded practice. So I'm, I'm definitely excited for them. What's been your impression of uh, Richard Smith, linebacker's coach? He's been great. You know, he's a guy, um, a great coach. He's helped me out a lot, you know, in this short time we've been together. Uh, I know he's helped a lot of the other guys out. Uh, he's intense. Uh, individual's intense. But, I mean, he's been, he's been a great coach for me so far. Did you did you feel a different level of intensity? You mentioned having pads on today. Was it a different level of intensity that you felt out there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of, I think that's standard, you know, first day with pads. You know, guys are excited. Guys are ready to hit. You know, we haven't had the pads on in months. So it's, a, it's an excitement thing. Um, you know, guys are just out there hitting. Um, you know, it feels faster. You know, things just, just one of those those kind of things you circle on camp. When the first day of camp, you see when you got pads on, it's like a, a day you kind of, it leads up to it. So definitely, definitely an intensity level. Um, you know, coaches want to see guys, you know, play physical and see what they got. So there's definitely, you know, it definitely raised the bar on days like today. Nick, with a guy like Mayock and Daniel this week, it hits COVID again as much as you guys are trying to do. Does it become frustrating? Do we come in every day kind of looking around? I mean, is it, talk, can you talk through the process of how it's been even with guys vaccinating, even with guys like doing their best to stay away? Yeah, I mean, honestly, for me, it's one of those things that, you know, it's kind of a part of life now. Um, you kind of deal with it. You got to take precautions. 
And it's kind of also, uh, you know, a reminder that, you know, stuff's still going on. So you just got to be careful. And, uh, but at the end of that, we got work here to do. So, you know, things keep moving. Uh, Rich Passaccio was in when he was in here yesterday was saying last year's over we move on we, you know we don't forget about it and move forward but how much in the offseason do you spend reflecting on last year thinking about last year going over it I know a lot of people are frustrated with how it went but do you do you think about it or is it just it's the past now we're in the future um you know at this time of the year I mean it's in it's in the past uh definitely in the offseason January February and kind of OTAs for myself personally I mean I do look back on things things I can improve on things that you know, I can, you know, get better at. Um, but at this point in camp, it's, it's in the past for me. Nick, when you're lined up at linebacker and you look up there and you see Yannick and Gakwe there, how much of a difference maker, I know it's early in camp, but how much of a difference maker do you see him being up there? Oh, I mean, I mean, like we were talking about intensity and just Coach Manelli getting those guys on. He's a guy that sticks out in the D-line. I mean, he's bringing energy. Um, you kind of feel his present, presence out there when he's, when he's lined up at end. Uh, I know the offensive line, you know, they, they talk about it too. I mean, when you're on the field, they're pointing at him. So he definitely brings, you know, uh, kind of that just, uh, you know, the slide, anything of that nature can help a linebacker. So, I mean, he's definitely helped us out as linebackers. And like, like I said, I mean, you feel his, his presence out there on the edge. Anything else? All right, great. Appreciate it.